What's up guys, this is Zach from Status Devs, and I'm sorry I have not been posting videos lately. I've just been busy and haven't really had any motivation to post stuff on here. But anyways, this video is going to be going over uh, the version control system Git, and there's a few different other types of version control systems. The two that I've used a lot is uh, Git and Subversion, uh, commonly known as SVN. And I prefer SVN if I'm working like at work we use SVN there's a lot of benefits and a lot of things that are different between them but overall it's kind of the same but I'm not gonna go over all the comparisons and all that stuff you can formulate your own opinion on what you like better you can google them and look it all up but this one's just gonna be going over how to set up a git repository on bitbucket.org so if you wanna get started go to bitbucket.org and sign up and I'm gonna make a new repository right now and I'll just call this YouTube so there it is I don't need a description we're gonna use git and there's an option here for issue tracking and you can set up a wiki it's pretty self-explanatory if you have bugs in your code you can write it out on here and other team members can see it and you can um, make someone else like you can assign someone else a task to fix it or whatever you want language I'll just do PHP because that's what I use regularly but it really doesn't matter just create that repository and then we're gonna go over setting it up so since we don't have any code we want to import you can click that if you do have code you want to import I'll choose I'm starting from scratch now what you need to do is make sure you have git installed and the easiest way to do this is open up Xcode which you might not have you can download for free it's for making uh, iOS applications but if you're on Windows, you can just Google like Git, like Windows, and you can pretty easily figure out how to install it. But since I'm on a Mac, open up Xcode. This is the easiest way. You don't have to go Google random crap. And now that it's open, you just go to Preferences, and you can go over to Downloads right here and install the command line tools. Shouldn't take too long. But after it's done you'll have git installed. So now what we need to do is make a folder that you want to use. You can call this anything you want and I'm going to call it YouTube. I put it in the root of my web server and the reason for this is any anytime I do something I can load it up on my local host and then test it and everything and then when it's good I can push it to the repository and this could be kind of annoying especially on Mac as you can see the change directory command when I first opened terminal is really long but what you can do is you can copy this and figure out the full path and go into the terminal preferences and go over to shell and just paste it in here and then every time you open it it will change right to the directory where you have your git repository since you're probably just going to have one that you're working on at a time so that's a lot easier than changing the directory every time manually now change the directory to the folder you just made and do git init, which is like git initialize, just starting git. And so it initialize the empty repository because there's nothing there. And then copy the command to add the origin of the git repository, which is on Bitbucket's website. So just paste that, press enter, and boom, you're all set up with git. Now we can pretty much do anything with this git repository, put all kinds of code and stuff. You can, most websites like Bitbucket and GitHub want you to... Um, add a readme file and we'll do that right now the reason I chose Bitbucket over github is because it allows free private repositories this is useful if you're working with a team on some random application or something you want to make and you don't want anyone else to see it that's why I use Bitbucket over github even though I personally think github's design and everything is a lot nicer it's a lot better than this if you're just making something for everyone to use that's open source I would recommend GitHub. It would be the same steps all the way through except you choose a different um, remote origin that you add. So now it wants us to make a readme, right? So we can just copy this command since there's nothing I want to add, but you can put anything else in it if it's a real readme file. So then I'll just do git add readme and what this does is whenever you want to add stuff to your git repository use git add and you can use um, git add and then a dot space dot that adds everything 
So if you just put in a bunch of files, you know, it's nice to do. And then one thing with Git and the same thing with SVN, you have to commit your files and you just describe whatever you did to them. So I'll do git commit and if you just do that, it'll let you type out like a paragraph, but I never use the commit that's that long. So you can do use dash m, which makes it so you can just put it right here. And I'll just put uh, first commit and press enter and it shows one file has changed, one insertion because there's only like one line and now if you want to push it the first time you do it you gotta do git push dash u origin master and that's basically the branch that you're pushing to git you can have a bunch of different branches like beta, production, whatever so now that you do that it's going to push it to the server and now it's all good so we can see in the next step you can invite people and you can get to work so show me my repo it should have the readme right here see first commit okay so now I'm going to show you how to add a file that's just like some random file you're working on as if you're actually coding something so I'll just open up coda2 right here and I have this index file and I'll just put high in it I know that's not real PHP I know and now we'll just minimize it go to terminal and right here we'll just put like git status or you could put like git st but see how right here it says index.php you can see all the files that are like untracked or have been modified so we'll do git add and index.php and I'll do a git commit and I'll put a uh, first version or something like that because there's nothing to really describe and then we'll git push and it's uploading and now we can see it right here. Oh, not yet. Okay, there it is, first version. So now I'll show you how to add like a modified file. So I'll change it real quick in Coda. There, I'll save it. And then I'll do a git status, and it shows modified index.php. So if I want to add it, I can just put git add index.php again and git commit. And I'll just put, let's say, version 2. Version 2. Man, I can't spell. And then let's get push that. And you'll see that it just updates the file. And I'll show you why it's so nice on here. Like if you have multiple people editing stuff, you can see version 2 right here. It will show what's changed. See plus and minus. So if it's a long file, you can see the side by side difference. And that's why it's really nice to do this. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, basic uh, getting into Git. So uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.